start the research here. Internet career, content ideas. Yep, welcome to economics. I hate my life. <laughs> economics is so rough, but ugh, it's gross. Okay. So, first thing we're going to be looking at is the Laffer Curve. I have no idea what this is. The Laffer Curve. Um, the Laffer Curve illustrates the, the so a theoretical relationship between rates of taxation and the resulting levels of the government's tax revenue. Assumes that no tax revenue is raised at extreme rate tax rates of 0% and 100% and there is, that there is tax rate between 0 and 100% that maximizes government tax re revenue. The shape of the curve is a function of taxable income elasticity as popularized by supply side economist Arthur Laffer. Yeah, um, I looked up Arthur Laffer in the past. He worked for Trump, so like his level of reliability in terms of economic policy. Watch Rose Wrist analysis of the Bosch v. Econ Conaboy debates. That was something. Yeah. The, eh, Destiny kind of described it best. It feels like they were there to have two different conversations, okay? And I think that's the best way you can kind of describe it. Um, under the assumption that the revenue is a continuous function of the rate of taxation, that zero revenue is collected at the endpoint, Rolls theorem says that a maximum must exist. One implication of the Laffer curve is increasing tax rates beyond a certain point is counterproductive for raising further tax revenue. In the U.S., um, conservatives have used a lot argue that lower taxes may increase tax revenue. However, the hypothetical maximum re what? How would lower taxes increase? tax revenue what however the hypothetical maximum revenue point of the Laffer curve or any given um, market cannot be observed directly it can only be estimated such estimates are often controversial the US um, marginal top tax rate is far from the top of the Laffer curve it was popularized for it with Dick, officials Dick Cheney and Don 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 um, I, I don't understand how that works. That seems so stupid. Man. Laffer, he, he knows their antecedents, including the Mukadima, uh, Ibn Khaldun, and the writings of John Maynard Keynes. Adam Smith articulated the gist. Give me a second. I got to turn my camera. Empirical analysis. Um, one of the conceptual uses of the, is the term that rate of taxation will raise the maximum revenue, in other words, optimizing revenue collection. The revenue maximizing tax rate should not be confused with the optimal tax rates, which economists use to describe tax rates in the tax system, raise a given amount of revenue, with the fewest distortions to the economy. Estimates Laffer curves, da, 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 da. writing in 2010, income taxation of goods and services. It's also been extended to taxation of goods and services, 2018, Econometrica, paper, Mirovede, Simon. What the fuck is Econometrica? Is it peer reviewed? Okay. Congressional budget released a paper called Analyzing the 10% Cut in Income Tax Rates. Considers the impact of salary. All right. Thanks, Taze. Appreciate the follow. In use political discourse is Reaganomics. Okay, I have some concerns about like the reliability. Justification. Supply side economi economics uh, indicates that the simple description of the Laffer curve are usually intended for pedagogical pedagogical purposes only. Do not burst up the. Um, how's it going, Taze? How you doing, bud? Um, yeah, I. Although the simplified Laffer curve is usually as straight as a straightforward symmetrical and continuous bell-shaped curve, in reality the bell-shaped curve may be skewed or lopsided to the either side of the maximum. Within the reality of complex and sudden changes to tax policy over time, the response of the tax revenue to tax rates may vary dramatically. It's not necessarily even continuous over time. When, for example, new legislation is enacted, when it, which abruptly changes the simplified static Laffer curve, explains the model in terms of two interacting effects of taxation, arithmetic effect and economic effect. The arithmetic... Okay, wait. Hold on. So we have to understand the tax rate is a bell shape. It's a bad like metric. It, it's complicated. Within the reality of complex and sudden changes to tax policy over time, the response of tax revenue tax rates may vary dramatically. It's not necessarily even continuous over time. When, for example, new legislation is enacted. Okay. Arithmetic. Thus, revenue R is equal to the extreme. Da, da, da. The supply the criticisms. 
Lever assumes that the government's re revenue is a continuous function of the tax rate. However, in some theoretical models, the fat lever curve can be discontinuous, leading to an inability. Mm hmm Yeah. It's fine to create theoretical models, but the problem comes is when you start to apply these, it creates issues. Lever curve is pre as presented is simplistic. It assumes a single tax rate and a single labor supply. An actual system of public finance are much more complex. Serious doubt about the relevance of considering a single marginal tax rate. In addition... Huh. Furthermore, the Laffer curve does not take explicitly into account the nature of the tax avoidance taking place. It is possible that if all producers are endowed with two survival packages in the market, ability to produce efficiently and ability to avoid tax, then the revenues raised under tax avoidance can be greater without the avoidance, and thus the maximum is found to be farther right than thought. Uh, the reason for this result is that if producers with low productive abilities tend to have strong avoidance abilities as well, uniform tax on producers actually becomes a tax discriminates on the ability to pay. However, avoidance abilities and productive abilities are unrelated. And the result disappears. Okay, I am very confused about that. I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask Revolt about that because I don't know what the fuck that meant. What's the M1 money supply? M1 and M2. That's the next topic. Measuring money. Cash in your pocket serves as money, but what about checks or credit cards? Are they money too? Rather than trying to state a single way of measuring money, economists often offer broader definitions of money based on liquidity. Liquidity refers to how quickly a financial asset can be used to buy a good or service. For example, cash is very liquid. Your $10 bill can be easily used to buy a hammer, a burger, at lunchtime. However, $10 that you have in savings account is not so easy to use. You must go to the bank or ATM machine and withdraw that cash to buy your lunch. Thus, $10 your savings account is less liquid. The Federal Reserve Bank, which is the central bank, is the bank regulator and is responsible for monetary policy that binds money according to its liquidity. We'll discuss this further later in the module, but for now, there are two definitions of money. Money, M1 and M2 money supply. M includes those monies that are very liquid, such as cash, checkable demand, deposits, and traveler's checks. M2 money supply is less liquid in nature and includes M1 plus savings and time deposits, certificate, certificates of deposits, and money market funds. Okay. Uh, includes so coins and currency in circulation. Closely related currency are checkable uh, deposits, also known as demand deposits. Uh, these are the amounts held in checking accounts. They are called demand deposits or checkable deposits because the banking institution must give the deposit holder his money on demand when a check is written or on a, or a debit card is used. These items together, a currency and checking account in banks, make up the definition of money known as M1, which is measured daily by the Federal Reserve System. Traveler's checks are also included in M1 but have increased in use, decreased in use over the recent past. M2 includes everything in M1 but also adds other types of deposit. For example, includes saving deposits, which are bank accounts only which you can have write a check directly from many banks and other funds also the chance offer a chance to invest in money market funds where the another ingredient of into k okay interesting in money supply that was interesting gross tax what is a gross tax what does gross tax mean when finally taxes whether as business or as employee, you may come across the term gross tax. The amount of gross tax you pay is typically calculated based on the total amount you receive from your job. However, there are exceptions, particularly with respect to gross income tax, is a tax assessed them against the money you earn. It can be applied to income from a job as well as the funds that are set aside in a state or trust. The New Jersey Division of Taxation's website notes that thresholds for paying in gross income tax are established based on ten total annual earnings and taxpayer status. Okay, cool. Um, what's the next thing? Equation of exchange. Yeah, and I'm just doing these because um, I was in a conversation the other day. And I'm just trying to figure out some general things. Monetary economics, the equation of exchange in the, is the relation N times V equals P times Q. Is the total nominal amount of money supply and circulation on the average in the economy. V is the velocity of money. That is the average frequency with which a unit of money is spent. P is the price level. And Q is the index of real expenditures. This PQ is the level of nominal expenditures. The equation is arrangement of the de definition of philosophy. As such, without the introduction of any assumption, it is a tautology. I feel like we're at a sinister precipice in regards to banks and money. What do you mean? In earlier analysis before the wide availability of the national income product accounts, uh, the equation of exchange was more frequently expressed in transactions from N times VT equals PT, where VT is a transaction velocity of money. Okay. Foundation. The foundation of the equation of exchange is a more complex relation. Uh, N times VT. Uh, I can't remember what that means. Um, or PI and QI are the respective price and quantity of the if the i transaction pt is a row vector the pi okay 
applications, quantity theory of money, money demand, history. So it's just a way of measuring measuring the relationship between money and velocity versus like price and the in, the real expenditures, I guess. I, I guess that makes sense. I don't fucking know, dude. Tax incidents. Uh, a tax burden is the effect of a particular tax on the distribution of economic welfare. Economists distinguish between the entities that ultimately bear the tax burden and those on whom the tax is initially imposed. The tax burden measures the true economic weight of the tax, measured by the difference between real incomes or utilities before and after imposing the tax, taking into account how the tax leads the prices to change. If a 10% tax is imposed on sellers or butlers of butter, for example, if the target market price raises 8% as a result, much of the buyer burden is on buyers, not sellers. The concept tax it was initially brought to economists' attention by the French physiocrats, in particular Francois Quesnay, who argued that the incidence of all taxation fails, falls ultimately on landowners and is at the expense of land rent. Tax act taxes is said to fall upon the group. Okay. So what are the criticisms of it? Tax incidents without perfect competition. A market without with perfect competition is very rare. Much more of the market is said to be imperfect competition, such as monopoly, oligopoly, or monopolistic competition. Public at large is ignorant of the fact that only a handful of banks actually exist. A false variety is visible to them, but more most are mere subsidiaries in Arabians of the much same older banks. Yeah, that creates issues in kind of like the dynamics of relationships. Like because if you have more banks, it's harder to kind of like effectively get access. But even then, you have like credit systems, which create issues in the relationship itself. So like it's complicated. Uh, da, 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 da. A chapter tax and marginal cost curve shifts to the left to reach a new equilibrium characterized by lower quantity and higher price than before. The elasticity of the curves is still the essential factor that predicts the size of the tax burden limiting customer. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. Tax incidents. The, the argument that taxation doesn't fall necessarily on... Um, on the uh, the producer falls more on the consumer. The, the question then comes is like, is that necessarily bad, right? Is sometimes you want people to buy less things, so like maybe there's a benefit there, but I don't know if it's like necessarily bad on its own, you know? MBS Treasury. Uh, Mortgage-backed securities, okay. Taxable negligence. In a negligence case involving personal injury, the settlement of free person injury is not taxable. Okay, I have nothing for that. Um, modern monetary theory. All right. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is a is a heterodox macroeconomic framework? Is my computer going to work with me? Is it going to be nice to me? Are you going to be a nice computer? Are you going to be friends? Are we going to be chillier? Okay, there we go. Heterodox Micronet says, Monetary, monetarily sovereign countries like the U.S., which spend tax and borrow in a fiat currency that they fully control, are not operationally constrained by revenues when it comes to federal government spending. But similarly, such governments do not rely on taxes or borrowings for spending since they can print as much money as they need or are the mon monopoly issues of the currency. Since their budgets aren't like a regular households, their policies should not be shaped by fears of rising national debt. MMT challenges the conventional beliefs of how the government interacts with the economy, the nature of money, the use of taxes, and the significance of budget deficits. These beliefs critics say are hangover from the gold standard era are no longer accurate, useful, or necessary. MMT is used in policy debates to argue for this progress of legislation or universal health, health care, or other public programs for which governments claim to not have enough money to fund. Core principle. The central idea of MMT is that governments with a fiat currency system under control can and should print um, as much money as they need to spend because they cannot go, go broke or be insolvent unless a political decision to do so is taken. Some say, say such spending would be fiscally responsible as the debt would balloon, inflation would skyrocket. but according to MMT, large government debt isn't the precursor to collapse and that we've been led to believe is. Um... Countries like the U.S. can sustain much greater deficit without cause for concern. A small deficit or surplus can be extremely harmful can cause in cause of recession since deficit spending is what builds people's savings. 
MMT theories explain the debt is simply the money that, that the government put into the economy and didn't tax back. They also argue that comparing a government's budget to that average whole household is a mistake. While supporters of the theory acknowledge that inflation is theoretically a possible outcome from such spending, they say I am unlikely can be followed with policy decisions in the future if required. Off the side, the example of Japan, which has much higher public debt than the U.S. According to MMT, the only limit the government has when it comes to spending is the availability of real, real resources, like workers, constructions. If spending is too great with respect to resources available, inflation can surge if decision makers are not careful. Origins of MMT. Okay. Eh. It has been called naive and irresponsible by critics. Thomas Valley said his appeal a lot. Its appeal lies in being a policy polemic for depressed times. He argued miscriticized various elements of theory like decision. And its central bank interest rates may be maintained at zero. It said it provides no guidance to countries like Mexico and Brazil. It does not take into account political complications arising from vested interests. Um, his views on the U.S. are similar to many MMT ideologies. I'm just looking for the push. I appreciate it, Gina. Thank you very much. Um, do the math and becomes clear that any attempt, any attempt to extract too much from seniorage, more than a few percent of GDP, probably leads to infinite upward spiral inflation. Eh, I don't know, it's complicated. Things are complicated. Economic sucks. Fuck our economics, okay? What's Moore's Law? Moore's Law is an observation of the number of transistors is... Oh, this is just, this is, ignore that. And then the final one is Island of Stability. Is this in regard to, yep, that's also nuclear shit. All right, um, give me a second. Autodidact, so I'm always interested in learning. Yeah, I have no idea what you just said there. So, so what is this? Uh, inflation, income taxes, and rate of interest at theoretical analysis. So my friend Raul, he has a master's degree in economics, and basically, I've been kind of listening to him, kind of trying to learn some things about economics. I'm confused as fuck still, but I'm trying to get a better idea. Income taxes are a central feature of economic life, but not of the growth models that we use to study the long run effects of monetary and fiscal policies. The taxes and current monetary growth models are lump sum transfers that, af that alter disposable income, but not directly affect tr uh, factor rewards with cost of capital. In contrast, the actual personal and corporate um, income taxes do influence the cost of capital to firms and the net rate of return to savers. The existence of taxes also generally changes the effect of inflation on the rate of interest on the process of capital accumulation. Current pr paper presents a neoclassical monetary growth model in which the influence of such taxes can be studied. The model is then used to study effects of inflation on the capital intensity of the economy. Early result that inflation increases capital intensity appears as a possible special case. More general, the tax rates. What the fuck is capital intensity? I have no idea what that means. Lump sum transfers. Uh, altered disposable income, but not really affect factor rewards or the cost of capital. Okay, those are words. Those are words that have been said. Early result, capital intensity. So, like, kind of the concentration of capital, I would think. As a possible special case. More generally, um, tax rates and saving behavior determine whether an increase in the rate of inflation will increase or decrease steady state capital intensity. Analysis also shows the net real rate of interest received by savers must be substantially altered by the rate of inflation. 3.3 discusses the desirability of adjusting the taxation of interest income to eliminate these arbitrary effects of inflation. The fourth section discusses the implications of this for the welfare effects of inflation and the optimal rate of growth of the monetary supply. This section presents a one-sector national neoclassical model of economic growth with inflation and income taxes. The model differs from that of Torben in two fundamental ways. The saving rates depend on the net rate Earn net, uh, savings rate depends on the net real rate of return earned by savers via personal and corporate interest income tax rates as well as lump sum tax. Because the analysis of the model section 3.2 will focus on comparative steady state analysis or dynamics, only these steady state properties will be discussed here. I am so confused. 
steady state economy will be characterized by inflation rate pi equals dp divided by p and a nominal interest rate of i. Yeah, I mean, it's good to be like that. It's good to be self-taught to some extent because you want to be constantly learning. It's just the issue that comes when self-taught is like we often like just have a bunch of like information like just kind of thrown at it. It's just kind of hard to direct like our framework and analysis. It's that's why we have used utility and having like people teach us. You know, labor force is constant fraction of the population. Production can be described by an aggregate production function. Liquidity preference. I have no idea what any of this means. Conclusion. As you explored the impact of inflation on a growing economy, the presence of a corporate uh, substantially alters the effects of inflation on the capital intensity of production. The market inter rate of interest and the real net return to savers. The existing theories of the optimal way to anticipate inflation must be revised in light of this effect. Analysis also suggests that recent proposals to adjust the tax rules for inflation should be modified to include a specific adjustment of the inflation premium and the rate of interest. There are several directions in which this research might be usefully extended. Usefully be extended. First, the model of financial behavior is highly simplified. Good night. Love you. It might be enriched to include corporate equity finance, household borrowing, and the use of inside money. Second, the current paper uh, focuses on only on the steady state effects of fully anticipated inflation. Analysis of the transition paths would be valuable. Third, a model um, in with two sectors would allow an analysis of the problems. Okay, cool. I Basically, what we've learned is a little bit about the Laffer curve, which sounds like bullshit. We've heard about the equation of exchange, which is related to the velocity of money and like price levels and indexes. Tax incidence is the idea of like uh, increasing taxes puts a greater burden on consumers. Okay. Um, modern monetary theory says like, hey, um, the, the limits that we think exist uh, probably are a lot less, are a lot higher than we think. And then this paper just says, hey, there's some relationship of like the effects of capital accumulation intensity versus like uh, the types of tax rates we employ. So yeah, let's, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm very confused. So yeah. <laughs>